Chapter 16, Medal of Valor. The day of the commendation ceremony draws clear in a bright, fitting backdrop for the recognition of bravery and dedication. You wake up feeling a mix of nervousness and pride, knowing that today your efforts and those of your squad will be acknowledged. I know I should be excited for today, and I am, but I wish the commissioner were here to celebrate with us. You stand before your wardrobe, wondering about the perfect outfit to wear for such a monumentous occasion. There's no so much riding on this outfit, and not long before Phoenix will be here. My outfit needs to say, I'm proud of 57, I've earned this opportunity to be honored. I might be a probie, but I've worked hard to set an example. Mm, I'm a proud member of 57. There are so many firehouses in the city, but 57 is mine, and we've proven worthy of recognition. As you cycle through potential outfits, your phone chimes with texts from Amelia and Lux. WTV, you do. You've better not be dressing down today, Ridley. Yeah, it's your chance to shine up on that stage today. Talk about timing. I was just debating on what to wear. We know you. You like to downplay your achievements. Not today. I want to see you strut like a peacock. Um, isn't today a bit serious for that? You're just saying dress like you're embracing the significance of the day. But peacocking wouldn't hurt. Just a little. You sit down your phone as your perfect outfit catches your eye. Sophisticated, classy, with a right amount of peacocking. This would certainly send the right message today, and I'm sure Phoenix would love it. Right. So, this is the normal outfit. Modest dress, which, you know, again, you're honoring what happened, the whole nine yards, but hey, let's You slip on the eye catching gold and navy ensemble when you've been saving for a special occasion. This outfit isn't just about looking good, it's a statement on my achievements and journey I've embarked on. Someone please explain in the comments. You snap a quick picture to send over to Amelia and Lux, immediately they flood your phone with praise. One word, stunning, beautiful, OMG gorge. That's three words. Missing the point. Definitely what I uh, meant by peacocking. Phoenix is going to have a tough time keeping his focus today. As you start to text back and knock at the front door, signals Phoenix's arrival. Time for your jaw to drop, Phoenix. You open the door to find Phoenix casually leaning against the door frame. Ready for our big... Eyes widen as he drinks in your outfit like you're on an... You're like you're in an oasis in the desert. Day. Day slowly sweeps your body, his jaw still hanging open at the side. I take it that I look okay? Phoenix finally finds his words again and then closes the distance between you and a tender kiss. If that's okay, I can't wait to see what else you've been holding back. You'll just have to tag along and see. Phoenix chuckles and holds out his arm and escorts you to his car. You and Phoenix arrive at Engine 57, where people have arrived in droves for the ceremony. It feels right to have a ceremony here, not just because the city hall is being rebuilt. I agree. Engine 57 sacrificed so much in the name of duty. The commissioner wasn't part of our engine, but her loss is felt just as deep. Not to mention all the blood, sweat, tears we've given since the Boston Arsonists came on the scene. You feel the emotions start to bubble up as you think of all the harm Michael caused. Phoenix squeezes your hand, gently reassuring you. He can't hurt us anymore, Ridley. You nod, knowing he's right. Just then, the mayor makes his way through the crowd to find you. There you two are, and not a moment too soon. We'll be getting started shortly. Uh, just tell us where you need us. There's a spot just down front for you and your entire squad. 
I wouldn't want you to be separated from them today, right? Mayor turns and about to welcome other guests when he turns back and looks at you. And Ridley, I'd be remiss if I didn't compliment your look today. Remarkable outfit. Sets the right mood. Right. Thank you, Mayor. You know me, fashion forward firefighter. You know, we never even got a good look at our love interest. I'm just saying, like... With that, the mayor gives you a final politician smile and then disappears to move on to his next duties. You nudge Phoenix. Can you believe this? Look at all these people here. It looks even bigger than the gala. I recognize firefighters from all over Boston. Not just chiefs either, just but regular firefighters too. And lots of dignitaries, councilmen, judges, and I think that woman is a senator. Just plaster on a smile and wear it all day. Lots of kissing babies, shaking hands today. I see you're looking forward to it too. Oh, really? How could you tell? Oh, your love of smiling and smoothing was a clear giveaway. I know it's a favorite of yours. Phoenix rolls his eyes, and one of the guests you're happier to see strolls your way. Chief Ridley, crazy how many people showed up for this, huh? And uh, by the look of your outfit, they're all be watching you, Ridley. Honestly, I'm a little jealous. Don't worry, Dak. You'll have plenty of eyes on you, too. This is pretty wild. All these VEPs are practically on our front lawn. I know my mom would feel honored with uh, all these people showed up. I just hope. Declan trails off, and it's clear. Just being here is tough for him today. I miss her too, Deck. Get me wrong, I'm glad that she'll be honored again today, but I'm afraid that people will eventually forget about her. She was a special woman who deserves to be remembered, and will keep that memory alive. You think about the issue, and the commissioner as an idea starts to form in your head. Maybe there's more we can do to honor her sacrifice, though. What do you mean? What if we set up a scholarship in her name? Can we even do that? People do it all the time. It probably takes some paperwork, but... You and Declan turn to Phoenix expectantly. Think about it, Chief. A scholarship in her honor could help someone attend the fire academy who otherwise couldn't afford it. It's an intriguing idea. She inspired so many people in the city. It'd be a great way to keep that alive. Ah, the Krista Campbell Memorial Scholarship. It does have a nice ring to it. You don't need to convince me. I think it's a great idea. I'll talk to the mayor about it later. See what we have to do to make it happen. Thanks, Chief. You know, my mom would have uh, really appreciated it. As the ceremony feels like it's ready to begin, you and Phoenix head towards the podium where your squad congregates in the first few rows. Ah, oh, damn, Ridley. That outfit looks even better in person. For sure, you are stealing the show. Seriously, you look great, Ridley. I just don't want to look at the, my best for the podium today. Got a rep 57, well, right? Everyone looks ready for the day's events. They all greet you and Phoenix with handshakes and pats on the back. I can't believe the amount of people we can actually fit on our little plot of land. I just hope they don't leave a mess. I have a feeling I know what our shift detail will be tomorrow. It feels weird being so close to the station and not having to work. Kinda like going to school on a Saturday. I kinda like it for once I get to hang out down here while people say nice things about me. Instead of being slammed with paperwork and pretending not to hear everyone talk behind my back about how grumpy the chief is. Oh, chief, you're never grumpy. I think I prefer a regular work day. It's nice and all, but I'd rather be cutting up with you clowns inside and waiting on a call. I went Ridley, but I won't complain about our house getting honored today. <clears throat> Why are me and Phoenix the only two wearing outfits versus everyone else is wearing their gear? Li Yang joins your group just as the mayor takes the podium. You and your squad take your seats as your attention turns towards the stage. Good morning, everyone. We are here today to honor and commend the bravery and sacrifice of Boston's firefighters. And we choose 57, specifically because of the part they played in capturing of the Boston arsonist. 
As the mayor points towards your squad, you get a nice round of applause from the crowd as well as some hoots and hollers. You hear that? They love us. Of course they do. Who wouldn't love us? And to show your appreciation, we have a few people who'd like to speak to Engine 57. The mayor steps back as a flurry of people from the past take the moment briefly to speak warmly about your squad. They're all heroes in my book, especially that firefighter Ridley. I can't believe they're all here. You made an impression on them all. We all did. Without 57, my daughter and I would have died in that Ferris wheel. When I grow up, I want to be just like them. As more people you've rescued come forth to share their gratitude, you fight back tears welling in your eyes. I'm so glad they're all doing well. Even Michael is wheeled out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> your, your eyes widen in shock when you see the next guest. Thank you, Mayor Dillinger, for giving me the chance to personally thank the members of Engine 57. Oh, snap. That's the Red Panda guy. Do you think his girlfriend ever took him back? I doubt it. That boy seemed to have some bigger problems he needed to work through. Maybe I'm just a romantic, but I'd like to think him and Aaron worked it out. No way. I'm sure she moved on. I'll even bet you my chores for the next week that she's moved on. You're on. Ridley, you want to in on this action? I'm with... Amelia. They gotta be together still. Even though it didn't work out that day, I think that the that big gesture was enough to win her back. Or, or just him getting assistance and help. But, you know, you all wait with braided... Waited, I don't know, bated breath as Justin continues. I was at a low point in my life, but the firefighters of 57 treated me with warmth and compassion, which is more than I can say for the Boston Police Force. Oh, that's a low blow. I broke into a red panda cage to win back my love, Aaron. It was a stupid choice, even if I had gotten the pan now, and I, I don't think she would have taken it, taken me back. Boom. Sounds like she didn't take him back. And you've got my chores next week. Please, Lux, don't be so happy for a couple to break up. They're just... Could you all shut the hell up and let him finish? They're just happy. They don't have to do chores. Looks like you and me are going to be spending a lot of time cleaning next week, Amelia. Amelia pouts as Justin continues. Without all this, I never would have... Uh, met my wonderful new girlfriend, Caroline. And while Caroline is obsessed with alligators, I've learned my lesson and want and won't try to get her one as a pet. Well, at least he learned his lesson. I am glad an alligator would not be fun to wrangle. Uh, nor as cute as the red panda. After Justin wraps up, the mayor takes the podium once again. You feel the butterflies in anticipation of what comes next. And now that you've heard from people that they've rescued, I'd like to invite Battalion Chief Shea Phoenix and Ridley to speak. Your heart races as you walk up to the stage. Feeling every eye on you, Phoenix reaches over and squeezes your hand in his. We got this, Ridley. We just have to stand there proudly while they say nice things about us and give us a medal. Well, when you put it like that... A moment later, both you and Phoenix stand at attention behind the mayor. Chief Phoenix and Ridley, on behalf of the city of Boston today, I want to recognize your individual acts of bravery. But first, I must commend the exemplary teamwork and unity your squad has demonstrated under your leadership. It wasn't long ago when the members of Engine 57 were split between two firehouses. Today, you wouldn't know the difference. You smile proudly at your squad, looking back at you in the crowd. Phoenix lowers his voice to just above a whisper so only you can hear. You're the reason we came together as a team. Not just me. It was a joint effort. Your chest swells with pride as the mayor continues speaking about your firehouse's camaraderie. Feels like just yesterday they were bickering about the merger. Now they're family. If it weren't for a Chief Phoenix and Ridley's exemplary work, we would have lost more souls in that City Hall Gala fire. 
The mayor bows his head, taking a moment of silence for those who lost their lives. Your thoughts drift towards the commissioner. Wherever you are, commissioner, I know you're watching over us. Last, but certainly not least, without these two courageous firefighters, the Boston arsonists would still be at large. And it is my honor to bestow them each with the Medal of Valor for their services to Boston. Step forward and allow the mayor to place the medal around your neck. Accept the award. Yay. Except we don't get it in our picture avatar, so it's completely pointless. Woo! Hey, there's Edenbrook in the background, I see. I can't believe this actually happened. I should kiss the medal, shake the mayor's hand. I'll shake his hand. You stand tall and shake the mayor's hand in gratitude. Thank you, mayor, for the honor. I should be the one thanking you. Technically, you are the mayor. <laughs> the mayor presents Phoenix with his Medal of Valor, and the crowd cheers for you both. Phoenix smiles at you, holding up his medal, and you reciprocate by holding up your own. And as the applause dies down, the mayor wraps up. After the ceremony, you and Phoenix return outside the station to catch a breather. You were inside for this? Question mark? See, short and sweet. Get our awards and get it over with. I know you're heartbroken that you didn't get the chance to give a speech. Congratulations, you two. Well earned. Yeah, we're all super proud of you guys. The full squad takes turns coming up to both of you and congratulating you until your sour-faced Yang finds your group. Uh-huh. Staff and I don't like that look. For good reason. I've been chatting up uh, some brass. Word around the campfire is they might be shaking up the station roster soon. Phoenix massages his temple, letting out a deep sigh. The rest of your squad reacts and eh, reacts in everything from disbelief to outrage. Wait, I don't get it. What does this mean? This suits from time to time think it's a good time or thing to shake up the system and reorganize the houses. Not to mention 90% of them have never spent a day inside of a firehouse. Wait, so they could break our squad up? Unfortunately so. It happened during my probation period. Luckily I got shipped to 57, but I got separated from a lot of friends too. This is BS. Did they give any reason? usual. They think it gets rid of some bad habits and fosters a better city-wide camaraderie. Please, what builds camaraderie is when we develop pride for our individual houses and treat our housemates like family. It's true. I can't believe they do this to us. <clears throat> As your squad fumes, you wonder what will happen if you're separated from your squad, your friends, and Phoenix. What if I move to the other side of town? Cut off from all the people I've called family here. Is there any way to stop this to convince them it's a terrible idea? You could try bringing it up with the mayor. He ultimately would be the one signing off on it. He might have great things to say about 57 during the ceremony, but it's not a guarantee things would remain the same. Do you think he'd listen to me? He has before, and this ceremony might provide the perfect opportunity. You've got a lot of sway today. Really? Bring me my chapstick. I've got ass kissing to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. It was a good laugh. Might as well try to curry favor while I still can. Hell yeah, Ridley. You're the best. Good luck, Ridley. Yeah, we know you can do it. Try not to be too forceful, but don't let him intimidate you. Uh, relax, everyone. I got this. I know you do. With a reassuring smile from Phoenix, you set off to find the mayor with your head held high. No one as Declan didn't say anything. As you weave through the remaining crowd, searching for the mayor, you weigh your possible arguments and appeals. I could highlight 57's impressive track record of late. Maybe I should lean more in the deep community ties we've been fostered. You're still unsure when you spot him in a rare moment of solitude. Firefighter Ridley, to what do I owe the pleasure of talking to the woman of the hour? Mayor Dillinger. This is about the future of my squad. 
Damn, their head held high. The mayor gives you a once-over. You're quiet, direct. It's rather refreshing to see after dealing with the world of politics. When it comes to serious matters, I find it best to get to the point. He eyes the number of people around you, civilians, media, firefighters alike. Perhaps we should take this conversation somewhere a bit more private. You nod and lead the mayor through the firehouse, finding a quiet corner in the vegetable garden. This will do nicely. Now, what about your squad's future? Mayor waits for you to continue, giving you his undivided attention. You take a deep breath, stealing yourself. Mayor Dillinger, I know that... Your office has to make tough decisions every day. You're focused on the city's best interests, and I respect that. But I also believe that sometimes you have to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. And what do you see when you look at the bigger picture? A team that's achieved great things, and one that has the potential to achieve even more. When Commissioner Campbell told me the mission she challenged you with, I've, I've made it my business to keep an eye on Engine 57. Needless to say, I've been thrilled with your progress. Well, were you aware of how well they've been working as a team lately? The deep community ties to Indy 57 has been fostering. Uh, I feel like, because if you say the community, like, uh, you've been fostering, then he'll think spreading out. That way you can spread out the community, spread out the ties, spread out the love, you know. I'm gonna go with working as a team. I think... I don't even think Commissioner Campbell expected to see the results we've been getting. Not just the, with the arsonists, but across the board. I suppose that's true. Today's ceremony is a great example of that. You force an uneasy smile, the mayor quickly notices there's more behind your question. Ridley, tell me, what's really bothering you? Well, some rumors are going around City Hall. That they want to shake up the fire department by reorganizing the house's personnel. Mayor inhales sharply. Clearly, this was something he didn't want to get out. I hope Liang was wrong, but I'm sorry, Ridley, that you had to hear about it that way. It is something being discussed, but no formal decisions have been made yet. So there you are, going to rip us apart, make us start over and build new relationships? Yeah, I mean, it happens every day. Anger rises in you, but you try to control it, knowing that the argument you make must be logical, not emotional. Still, the mayor picks up on your unease. I know it's not what you wanted to hear, and I know that a lot of firefighters initially resist and protest these reorganizations. But the evidence shows this process works to not only promote diversity and inclusion, but ensure cohesiveness throughout the city. I... I'm sorry, but I have to disagree. Oh? And why would that be? Engine 57 is a perfect example of cohesiveness and diversity. Commissioner Campbell put together a team that not only is skilled, but one that complements each other's strengths and weaknesses. You see the mayor begin to protest, but you push on. I know it's easy to simply look at the numbers on a page, but the fire department is a living, breathing entity. If you rip apart the bonds and camaraderie of a team, you're going to lose the very things that make a firehouse effective. I understand your concerns, but the city is facing a budget shortfall. We need to explore all the options. But isn't this just about the budget? This is about the safety of the citizens of Boston. No other team has the bond we do. No one else is as effective as we are. And I damn well bet you'll hear the same from every other fire firehouse in the city. Mayor Purse is his lips considering your argument. If you make these changes, you're putting the lives of the people of Boston at risk. That's a rather dire prediction. It's not a prediction, it's a fact. You take a deep breath trying to regain your composure. Look, I get you have a tough job to do. And you have the best interests of the city at heart, but I'm asking you to consider this. Take a look at the facts and make the decision that will best serve the people of Boston. Why do I feel like your argument could have been so much better? Like, seriously so much better. This was weak.
Mayor pauses for a long time before speaking, seemingly weighing each point of your argument. Eventually, he meets your eye with a request. I could have literally argued better, I'm just saying. I could literally do it right now if you want. Tell me, Ridley. One distinct example of how your squad worked as a unit that might not have happened if you were all in different houses. Honestly, Mayor, there are so many to choose from, but if I had to pick one, it would be all how we all came together after the gala have leaned on each other while chasing the arsonist. Leaning on one another. The arsonist was able to strike fear into the entire city, most of all the firehouses. One thing I've learned in this job is that fear comes from territory, but you need to learn how to deal with it. Pause to make sure the mayor's following and note that he's hanging on your every word. And the best way to do that is to be open about it. Our squad was vulnerable with our fears because we trusted each other. That helped us chase the arsonist with the clearer minds. I don't think what that would have happened if we were around other squad mates that we didn't know and respect as well. Mayor shakes his head as a smile slowly forms. I see more and more why everyone that I talk to about you sings such high praises. You may be a believer out of me. Here is my proposal. Whatever happens with the reorganizing the houses, I promise not to touch Engine 57. You'll be a sort of control group to see if your way is actually more advantageous. Really? Thank you so much, Mayor. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Somehow, I know I won't be. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to sneak out of here and get back to my office. Mayor heads off, and you return to your squad to tell them the good news. Well, is it over? Are we doomed? Yes, he fired me immediately. <sighs> Only if doomed do mean sticking around. It's official. Engine 57 is here to stay. I swear you're like a mayor whisper or something. Your team all congratulate you, and even Liang is wearing a big grin. You're impressing me more and more, Proby. Here's to Ridley, the best damn firehouse in Boston. Hell yes. Your squad, your family, piles on you all at once, everyone excited to stick around with each other. Hours later, after everyone disperses, you and your squad remain behind at the firehouse, enjoying each other's company. It feels like we're turning the page on the last month or so and beginning a new chapter. Obviously, we'll never forget Krista, and she'll always be a part of us, but it's time to move on from the arsonist, the gala fire, and the pain and suffering from it. Amen. As your squad looks around at the mess left behind by everyone outside, you all start to groan about the cleanup. This is going to take forever to clean. Uh, it was only a few hours. How does it look like this? Look at the broom. No, we can clean up tomorrow. I've got a few cases of beer stashed away. I think we deserved a little celebration of our own. A party? Just what the doctor ordered, or I guess in this case, the firefighter ordered. Yeah, let's get the brewskis going. I'll throw on some tunes. Soon, your squad's got to be beer flowing, music blasting, and everyone letting loose. You barely notice Phoenix climb on top of a fire truck until he whistles for everyone's attention. Everyone listen up. I want to say something. Squad gathers around Phoenix as Harold lowers the volume on the music. First off, I want to say I commend everyone here for their hard work since the merger. I know it hasn't always been easy, but everyone here has made incredible contributions to the team effort. Here, here. Ailey raises her beard and the whole squad joins her. This job isn't easy. We have to put our complete trust in our fellow firefighters. When 57 and 59 came together, I wasn't sure that would be possible. But you surpassed all of my expectations. We've really gelled as a unit, a force, a family. Hell yeah, Chief. As we know, it's never guaranteed that we will all walk out of a fire in one piece. But I wouldn't want to charge into a burning building with anyone else. The entire house bursts into raucous applause. You raise your drink and a toast. Same here, Chief. Here's to... 
looking out for each other. 57, 59, stronger than the sum of her parts. The best damn firehouse in Boston. A chorus of agreement that goes all around you as your squad all raise their glasses and cheer. And one more thing before I get off the truck. Today I signed off on Ridley ending her probation early and becoming a full-fledged member of the squad. Wait, what? I'm no longer a probie? Congrats, you grew up. You can now go shopping for big girl clothes. As the realization taunts on you, you're overcome with emotion as Phoenix smiles down at you. To say that she has put her life on the line for all of us would be an understatement. She's saved my butt and some of yours on multiple occasions. And after talking to the mayor on behalf of all of us, I'm happy to welcome her officially to Engine 57. Your squad breaks out into cheers, each of them clapping you on the back. Welcome to 57, not Proby. You deserved it, Ridley. I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. Hell yeah, Ridley. Your squad surrounds you and teases, spraying you with their beer before laughing and drinking it instead. I love you, Ridley, but I'm not wasting my beer on you. Uh, thanks, everyone. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Woot. As the party rages on, you look around at everyone enjoying their drinks, telling stories, and dancing to the music as Harold plays DJ. Violent, we have a moment where we can have fun and celebrate in each other's company. And I know just who I want to celebrate with. <laughs> you look around for Phoenix, but don't see him in the main room, so it's just you start exploring the firehouse. Eventually, you find him enjoying a glass of whiskey in his office. There you are, avoiding the party. Uh, I just wanted a moment to reflect. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. Phoenix pulls a second glass out and pours you a glass as you make yourself comfortable in the chair opposite of him. I see I'm getting a taste from the hidden stash. He laughs as he clanks his glass with yours and leans back and takes a sip. I've been sitting here thinking of everything we've been through together. What you mean to me, how you've changed me. Shame. How have I changed you? You've made me softer, kinder. You got me to appreciate what's important in life. You helped me find the old Shay that kind of disappeared after Shelley's death and hadn't been seen since. Phoenix smiles at you earnestly, sincerely. Phoenix, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. Having you here is enough. For a moment, you and Phoenix sit across from each other and lost in each other's gaze. For so long, I focused on this job, on doing everything right way. I sacrificed everything else, including relationships, to be the best chief I could be. Never in a million years did I think my person, my match, would walk through that door wearing a firefighter's uniform. I'm your person, huh? He stands up, crosses the distance between you, he lifts your chin up with a finger so you're looking into his eyes. You're my everything, and I only hope you feel the same about me. You try to reply, but Phoenix claims your lips with his. You pour your every emotion and feeling into the kiss, showing how much he means to you. Phoenix. Unlike the previous lustful exchanges you've had with him in his office, this feels different. The kiss feels like a mix of affection and a burning passion. I want this moment to go on forever and melt into his arms to give my all to him. Phoenix pulls back from the case and again his gaze finds yours. The air crackles with electricity between you all it takes as one spark to ignite the flames. I want all of you, Ridley. He looks from you to the door and you know exactly what's on his mind. Hey, at least we finally get to see his outfit. Oh, take a breath. You take Phoenix's hand in yours and gently brush your lips against his knuckles. You didn't hook up. Yeah, you're right. As much as I want to, all, your, all, all of our squad is downstairs and to come up in any minute. You're right. We shouldn't take the risk, Let's, lest we scar them for life. The two of you share a laugh and still connected, neither of you wanting to let go. The smile fades from his face, and a more serious look takes its place. I want you to know, Ridley, that this is the happiest I've ever been. 
being with you is more than I ever dreamed I could feel. I never thought I could feel like this either. Move closer to him, touching your foreheads together to connect the two of you further. I don't know who I was before you, Shay. I've always felt like there was something bigger meant for me, but I didn't know what it was. For a while, I thought I was becoming a firefighter. But now I know I it was finding you. Wraps his arms around you, holding you close. I feel the same way, like you're everything that I've been waiting for for years. Yearning. You see words catch in his throat, feel his heart pounding beneath his chest, and as if suddenly nervous. Your Michael stabbed me. I was laying there wondering if I was going to live. There was one regret I had. And what would regret would that be? That I never got to tell you this. I love you, Ridley. Your heart swells as you hear the words from his lips, leaving only the purest joy in its place. Phoenix, I... I love you too. His eyes go wide, a small gasp escaping. Your heart soars at the look on his face. Now would be the correct moment we might want to bow and chicken wow on. You know what I'm just saying? Like, why is it we're only confessing love after the fact? You know, a lot of people mistake love and, you know, effing for love. Just saying. Anyway, <clears throat> I think I've known it for a while, but I was so scared to say it first. I didn't want to scare you off. Really, I'm not going anywhere, I promise. Cups your face, moving in to press a sweet, tender kiss to your lips. I look forward to our future together. Me too. I can't wait to fight more fires with you, be a real couple, grow old with you. Let's let's start with being a real couple first. We've kept everything a secret for so long. I can't wait to walk hand in hand with you down the street on a warm Sunday morning. I can't wait to kiss you in public and not worry about who might see us. Phoenix kisses you once more tenderly and you wish the moment could go on forever. But there's an alarm. You look at Phoenix and it's not hard to laugh at the timing. Downstairs you can hear your squad snapping into action. Uh, to be continued. To answer, Phoenix just smiles and kisses you once more sweetly. Let's go to work. Thank you for playing Hearts of Fire. We hope you enjoyed your fiery adventures with Phoenix and all of Engine 57 Pixelberry. Okay, alright. Well, it's finally the end. Something tells me we won't be getting a book, too. No surprise. Anyway... Uh, before I get to my thoughts on this book, first and foremost, thank you all for watching. Please, if you did enjoy, let me know in the comment section, but also make sure to like, share, and subscribe. All right, now on to the sentimental garbage. First and foremost, I didn't pick the diamond choice because um, I knew this was the end. It's pointless. It's just bound chick a wow wow. Um, you know, also, I wouldn't have been able to show it regardless because, you know, Oh, look where we're, where we're watching this video currently. Anyway, um, other than that, so I'm glad we reached yet another ending of a book. Um, so for me, this book was okay. It wasn't great. I'm going to be honest with you. really wasn't great. Um, I feel like the Michael and the whole thing was a little rushed. Um, I feel like there could have been more to this. Um, the thing with Liang and Phoenix was handled well. Um, I, I, you know, the writers kind of forgot the whole, the firehouse has a rule, right? And I'm assuming that goes for all the firehouses. But um, I, there was that rule that, you know, you're not supposed to have relationships as firefighters. I, I guess we're just going to ignore that ever was spoken of and had a whole entire chapter if not multiple chapters about that, um, especially after it was spoken. So I just were, I guess we're just going to ignore that. And because it's the end of the book anyway, um, we never found a, a thing around that. Just saying, you know, again, really bad writing, um, you know, plot holes, plot armor, whatever. Um, 
again, I feel like the Michael thing was rushed. There was actually very little potential for the arsonist for the reason, like the reasoning behind Michael and the arsonist. Like, like it just, it was lukewarm at best. And I'm going to be honest with you. That's on a hot 90 degree day with roadkill. Like, I'm just saying, um, you know, there, there could have been so much more drama and intrigue and mystery behind the arsonist. And there could have been like maybe firefighters just because they weren't united or because of petty political crap or whatnot, they, they could have maybe caused him to lose his family or maybe he lost a loved one and he set out to, to have revenge against firefighters or he set out because he saw your your firehouse was divided and he and he set out to teach you a lesson and in the end it brought you together like again you right you know damn well right now if you're while listening right now you're like damn that's actually some really good storytelling right there tell me i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong in the comment section okay like you know, I'm, I'm kind of like the Richard Castle of this shit. You know, just because I'm not working on this app doesn't mean I don't write other things. And I do have a lot of storyboarding. I do game development. I, you know, do feedback for people and everything else. And, you know, Pixelberry is one of the very few apps that is one just doesn't listen to people. They don't listen. They don't listen to you. They don't listen to me. They don't listen to anybody. Let's be honest. Let's Let's not sugarcoat this. I'm not, I'm not wanting to be special. If anything, I wanted to make this app a far better than it is right now. Um, and I always wanted to be one of those people that, hey, man, like, I would love to pitch you some ideas, you know, the whole nine yards. And, and I didn't ask anything for it. And all the times that I tried with Pixelberry, it just, it was flat. Just no one cared. It, it wasn't even flat. It was in a void. Right? And let's be honest. They've never listened to any of us. Okay. So, with that being said, um, most of the writers that I once knew are all gone from the company now, and I, I, don't, I honestly don't even know on a first-name basis who's now at the, at the company, um, who's, who's worth anything to know their name at this point, because most of the good writers have left. Sorry to tell you that, but it's, it's all honesty. Um, you know, if you're an actual good writer and you're listening to me right now, hey, why don't you introduce yourself and maybe we can brainstorm, talk, you know, salvage this app. But otherwise, we've come to another closure of a book. I'm glad we did this together. I'm glad we did this as a family. We did this as a channel. I look at this channel and this community as a family, so that's why I say family first and foremost. Um, but again, I, I just, again, I, I, I want to give it a five out of ten. It's a lot better than the other books that we've been recently covering, um, you know, like Today's Filthy Rich and, and things like that. But again, it's not great and it's not good. It's something that at least was OK. Right. It was it didn't it, it's in the middle. So I don't want to like it. and I don't want to say it's not for me. But because of the glaring omissions and everything else like that. I mean, we didn't even have Edenbrook play much of a role. We didn't meet the staff of Edenbrook. We only met one individual, which is Dr. Ramsey. Um, you know, as a firefighter, you, you typically meet hospital staff more than just once. And especially when it's just, hey, you're the person in the emergency room. Um, and Ridley was, right? Or Shay was. Um, you, you typically meet the emergency staff and, and whatnot. Um, so I don't understand why that didn't play a role in it, too. One, that would have given us more chapters. Two, it would have been great storyboarding, and it would have been more story for us. I, again, I don't understand these things. Um, again, I, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, just because of all that, and I've had a lot of cons and not that many pros... I think I'm going to drop the score to go not for me. I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you. So there's the not for me check mark. Again, I I feel like this whole like it or not for me thing is something that the writers aren't really listening to anyway. I think it's just for us. I think it's just a just for us. Um I really doubt they're listening to it. So other than that, uh I don't know. I I look forward to your comments down below, especially if you've reached this far in the video. 
Once again, thank you all for watching, and I love your beautiful faces, and I'll catch you all some other video. Peace out.